thousands and thousands of people who have been touched by the Krishna consciousness movement primarily through the individual entreaties of devotees who have gone out of their way to meet people where they live, in public, speaking, distributing literature, giving prasadam, extending their hearts to people, have come from a position of complete darkness, meaning they don't believe there is another life, they don't believe spiritual life is important, and so forth, to fully embracing the process of Krishna consciousness and wondering, what was I thinking before? So it's altogether necessary, and it's also a, uh, the mandate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to go everywhere. He did it himself. He traveled to many parts of India, and in cases where he met people who were from various other cultures, he gave them the same message. Of course, in a palatable way, we speak to people in their own language so that they can appreciate it. That's called realization. But he did go everywhere in Prabhupada notes, even when he spoke to the Muslims and converted some of them to Krishna consciousness, specifically related to them through their own scriptures and culture and so forth. And Prabhupada says this is the duty of everyone as a follower of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to go to all parts of the world and meet people to give them the opportunity to take to Krishna consciousness. And the Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami says, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami says, Kirata Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasha Abhira Shumba Yavan, Yavana Kasadaya, Yene Chapapa, Yadapashaya Shaya Shudyanti Tasmai. Namaha, that, that Krishna is so powerful that through his devotees he can elevate anyone from any situation in life. And he names many different categories of people who have become estranged from the culture of God consciousness. So today we're going to have a time to discuss our realizations, talk about our realizations from the past year in the propagation of Krishna consciousness, in the cultivation of our own Krishna consciousness. We're going to take at least a couple hours. And we're going to then take prasadam. Then we're going to have a brainstorming session for another couple of hours to talk about how to do it better the next year. And that's one of the, uh, the means by which we advance in Krishna consciousness is by looking each year to improve what we've done previously. Each month what we've done previously. And when the tension is there, when there's a goal to be met, then we have some impetus to improve. In the last days of our marathon, Malini and a couple of devotees came to me. They were wondering whether to go to Fremont or to downtown San Francisco. And I said, oh, go down to San Francisco, have fun. <laughs> and they came back the next week and said, it wasn't that much fun because we didn't have the same pressure. You didn't have, we didn't have the goal hanging over our head to do a certain thing. It wasn't fun. <laughs> we can't have, <laughs> there is no fun in this world except for working hard for Krishna, with, with a sense of responsibility. And interestingly enough, even in that feeling of anxiety for getting our service done, we're actually experiencing some bliss. That tapasya, there's a little heat. Whereas, left without any direction or any goal, we may be lackadaisical, we may not consider making improvements, we also may uh, become dissuaded even from doing our service and do something else instead. And that's not fun, that's actually the greatest suffering, to be disconnected from one's intense service. Service is intense. Mother Yashoda is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not that there's any time in the spiritual world, 
the consideration is there that she never stops thinking about Krishna and, and how to protect him from monkeys, from fire, from all kinds of demons. Everyone's always thinking of Krishna, worrying about him in a complete anxiety. And in that anxiety, there's bliss. There's complete bliss. And also in the separation from Krishna, there's the highest sense of bliss. And we should also feel that in our service, that if we, even the prospect of being separated from our service for a moment should make us feel uh, great anxiety. So let's re recite a few important verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam before we start. Can we have full screen view, please? Is it possible? Or do we have to have all that on the left? Okay. Let's recite together. Kvachin yivartate padrat kvachit sharati tat punaha prayashchitam atopartam manye kunjara shauchavat. Translation. Sometimes one who is very alert so as not to commit sinful acts is victimized by sinful life again. I therefore consider this process of repeated sinning and atoning to be useless. It is like the bathing of an elephant, for an elephant cleanses itself by taking a full bath, but then throws dust over its head and body as soon as it returns to the land. This is from the Vaishna, from Srila Prabhupada's shloka book, the sixth cant, canto important verses that Prabhupada used frequently for those of you online who would like to refer to your books if you need to. And also we welcome you, everyone who's joined us on the internet. Thank you very much for joining the universal community of hearing and chanting. Next, please. Tapasya brahmacharyena shamina cha dhamina cha chagina satya shaucha bhyam yamina niyamina va to concentrate the mind, one must observe a life of celibacy and not fall down. One must undergo the austerity of voluntarily giving up sense enjoyment. One must then control the mind and senses, give charity, be truthful, clean, and nonviolent. Follow the regulative principles and regularly chant the holy name of the Lord. Kechit kevalaya bhaktya vasudeva parayanaha Agam dunvandikarts nyena niharam ivabhaskaraha. Only a rare person who has adopted complete unalloyed devotional service to Krishna can uproot the weeds of sinful action with no possibility that they will revive. He can do this simply by discharging devotional service, just as the sun can immediately dissipate fog by its rays. Yamaduta uchuhu veda pranihito dharmo yadharmas tadvipar yayaha vedo narayana sakshad swayambur iti shushruma. The Yamadutas reply That which is prescribed in the Vedas constitutes dharma, the religious principles, and the opposite of that is irreligion. The Vedas are directly the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, and our self-born. This we have heard from Yamaraj. Dharmam tu sakshat bhagavat pranitam navai vidur rishayo napi devaha nasidha mukya asura manushya kuto nu vidyadara charanadayaha Real religious principles are enacted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although fully situated in the mode of goodness, even the great rishis who occupy the topmost planets cannot ascertain the real religious principles, nor can the demigods or the leaders of Siddha Loka to say nothing of the asuras, ordinary human beings, vidyadaras, and charanas. Swayampur Narada Shambhu Kumara Kapilo Manuhu Pralado Janako Bhishmo Bali Rabaya Sakirvayam 
Lord Brahma, Bhagavan Narada, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, Lord Kapila, the son of Devahuti, Swayam Bhuvamanu, Prahlad Maharaj, Janak Maharaj, Grandfather Bhishma, Bali Maharaj, Shukadev Goswami, and I myself know the real religious principle. Etavan eva loke smin pum sam tarma parasmritaha bhakti yogo bhagavati tanama grahanadi bihi. Devotional service beginning with the chanting of the holy name of the Lord is the ultimate religious principle for the living entity in human society. Tasmat Sankirtanam Vishnor Jagan Mangalam Anghasam Mahatam Apikauravya Vidyai Kantika Nishkritam. My dear King, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord is able to uproot even the reactions of the greatest sins. Therefore, the chanting of the Sankirtan movement is the most auspicious activity in the universe. Please try to understand this so that others will take it seriously. Muktanam apisidhanam narayana parayanaha sudulabha prashantatma kotishwapi mahamune. O great sage, among million, many millions who are liberated and perfect in knowledge of liberation, one may be a devotee of Lord Narayan or Krishna. Such devotees who are fully peaceful are extremely rare. Narayana Padaksarve na kutaschana pibyati Sorga Pavarga Narakeshu Apitul Yarta Darshinaha. Devotees solely engaged in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayana. Never fear any condition of life. For them, the heavenly planets, liberation, and the hellish planets are all the same. For such devotees are interested only in the service of the Lord. Kama dveshad bhayad snehad yata bhakteshvare manaha avesha tad agam hitva bahavas tad gatim gataha Many, many persons have attained liberation simply by thinking of Krishna with great attention and giving up sinful activities. This great attention may be due to lusty desires, inimical feelings, fear, affection, or devotional service. Gopya kamad bayat kamso dveshach chait yadayo nrapaha Sambandad Vrishnaya Snehad Yuyam Bhakta Vayam Vibho. My dear King Yudhishthira, the gopis by their lusty desires, Kamsa by his fear, Shishupal and other kings by envy, the Yadus by their familial relationship with Krishna, you Pandavas by your great affection for Krishna, and we the general devotees by our devotional service, have obtained the mercy of Krishna. Katamo pina vina syad panchamam purusham prati tasmat kenyap yupayena manat krishne niveshayet. Somehow or other, one must consider the form of Krishna very seriously. Then, by one of the five different processes mentioned above, one can return home back to Godhead. Atheists like King Vena, however, being unable to think of Krishna's form in any of these five ways, cannot attain salvation. Therefore, one must somehow think of Krishna, whether in a friendly way or inimically. Sripaladuvacha Tatsarumanye suravarya dehinam sadasamudvigna dhyam sadgrahad hivabapatam griyamanda kupam varabgrato yadharim ashrayeta. This is the bonus one because it went into the seventh canto. 
So you get a bonus verse this morning. Prahlad Maharaj replied, O oh, best of the Asuras, king of the demons, as far as I have learned from my spiritual master, any person who has accepted a temporary body and temporary household life is certainly embarrassed by anxiety because of having fallen in a dark well where there is no water but only suffering. One should give up this position and go to the forest, Vana. One should go to Vrindavana where only Krishna consciousness is prevalent and one should thus take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Did you like those verses? Yes. Do you feel better now? It's the cure to all anxieties and mental speculations is to take shelter of the Bhagavatam in a, in a systematic way. It has to be systematic because the mind will attack us from various angles and tell us that we have other better things to do. But make no mistake about it, there is no better activity than hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. In fact, um, one of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates was given the, the, the service. To, 24 hours a day, he'd simply read Bhagavatam to Mahaprabhu. He would sing it in various tunes. And this is uh, an occupation in and of itself. Not many people get that occupation. Not many people have the opportunity. Several times, devotees have come to me and said, I'm thinking about getting a PhD in such and such a thing. And he said, why well, don't you just get a PhD in the Srimad Bhagavatam? Because who has one? And those who do have those PhD in the Srimad Bhagavatam, they become very valuable in society. Someone takes the trouble to get a PhD in the Bhagavad Gita. Everyone says, oh, I know Bhagavad Gita. <coughs> no, you don't. <laughs> just by saying that means you don't know Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> get a PhD in Bhagavad Gita, write a dissertation on Bhagavad Gita. And then teach it to others. That's life. That's Sankirtan. Hear and chant and go give it to as many other people as possible. That's the real occupation. That occupation is backed by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you can't beat that. Anywhere in the three worlds, you won't get a better job placement than that. That's secure also because as Narada Muni, he has unlimited engagement. You see him coming out everywhere in the Shastra. He just shows up to do his service in the most amazing places. So this is what we've been given. This is our sankirtan. We've been given this opportunity to go anywhere we like, and nobody can stop us. We can go behind enemy lines. We'll figure out ways to inject the Bhagavad Kata into human society one way or another. It's not part of the discussion now. Everyone's talking about anxiety-ridden topics how to protect the material body. That's not possible. Therefore, everyone's in anxiety. And everyone's t separating God from their lives in all kinds of uh, variety, various ways, unlimited ways. There are 8,400,000 species of life. Opportunities to forget God, <laughs> most of them. <laughs> to fly in the air. I was watching birds yesterday fly in the tree. They're so adroit and they can move freely from one branch to another, from one house to another over neighborhoods and uh, they're arrogantly f forgetting God in that species of life because it's the rebellious nature of the living entity. So now we're making a declaration, we're turning back towards Krishna willfully we've decided this is the highest occupation in life is to hear and chant about Krishna and to remember him in all circumstances. It doesn't matter where we are, what situation of life we're in, what happens to the material body, there is no impediment to devotional service. So we'll try to squeeze out every bit of Krishna kata we can within the short amount of time we have left in this lifetime, in every day, in every month, in every year. And that's why we're gathered here today. It's not just about sankirtan goals, but it's about a lifetime of dedication to the process of hearing and chanting and helping each other come up to the stage of purity because it's our only force. Our team is held together, we're all volunteers. And everyone needs this purity of heart in order to go on with their service. If they lose it, if they get into association that's discouraging or that's distracting, they'll also become affected. 
We have to appreciate everyone and fan the spark within the heart of everybody that is around us because a chain's only as strong as its weakest link. And our team is held together here by the purity of intention. And that can only come from chanting good rounds. If you don't chant good 16 rounds, which is the prescription given by our founder, Acharya, very difficult to think straight. You may concoct many different things, but they won't be accurate in the, in the long run. And we must also read all of Prabhupada's books. If you make your occupation, systematically going through every single one of Srila Prabhupada's books and making sure that you read it from cover to cover, every page, every preface, every table of contents, you'll be occupied from now until the time you take your last breath. And when you do take your last breath, you'll be thinking of Krishna. Because that's why he provided those books. And he said, everything I had to say, I said in my books. And I read last night when I was doing some research that he was saying, I can't possibly talk to everybody. Now he had, after he had a certain number of disciples, after about 1968, 69, when so many disciples started coming in, uh, Prabhupada got overwhelmed with letters. He started thinking of ways he would answer the letters while he was taking massage. Someone else would type them out. He'd read the letter, type them out, and then he'd start saying, you answer the letter <laughs> to, his, to his head disciples and so forth. And then later on he told, so it's mathematically impossible to answer everyone. He said, that's why I'm putting everything in my books. And if you simply read my books carefully, you'll know what I had to say, and you'll know who, you know, what's in my heart. That's what we've got, and we're lucky to have it. We're lucky to have the impetus to want to have it. And we're trying to give it to other people as much as possible, as much as they can take it. And for that, we have to depend on Krishna in their hearts. Ishvara sarva bhutanam ride sherjuna tishtiti Brahmayan sarva bhutani yantra rudrani maya ya Krishna's there directing the living entity within the heart. And if he gets a little contact with devotional service, Krishna will inform him, this is a good idea, you should take this up. It's up to the soul to take it or not take it, but Krishna will help from within the heart. So, today we're going to hear the realizations of the devotees, if I ever stop talking, um, from what's happened this year, last year, 2014. It was our best year ever in Sankirtan. I also noticed that Los Angeles may have had its biggest year in history. They gave over $300,000 to the BBT, $336,000. Other notable uh, temples in the top three in America were the... Uh, were the um, Rupanuga Vedic College traveling a party. And coming in number three was ISKCON of Silicon Valley. <laughs> By a lot. That means everyone else, number four, and everyone after that is, is quite a bit. Uh, further behind is kind of Silicon Valley, and we're just a little temple. We just have a few volunteers here. I uh, hope we're held together with rubber bands and string. But, <laughs> but, our, but our determination is to get better every year, to, to somehow other please Srila Prabhupada, and it, it's difficult. It's difficult to hold people together these days, to keep everything going in one direction, to manage a household, to manage an apartment is difficult. Manage a hut is difficult in this day. What's to speak of an apartment? You've got to have renter's insurance and all kinds of other junk. What's to speak of a house? It's like running a major business. What's to speak of a temple? That's, that's, a, that's a big... What is it? It's a scale of a company. Like It is running a company. It's a non-profit company. And uh, we're doing it for a reason. We're doing it so that we can create this space so that everyone can come in. All living entities are welcome to be born here if they like. Please, I'm announcing. <laughs> Any demigods up there who are cashing in their Sukriti so they can be born in Kali. You can be born here. Just come help us in the Sankirtan movement. Other living entities anywhere in the universe, come here. We will do the best we can to create an environment so you can hear and chant about Krishna, talk about Krishna, 
chant Hare Krishna, which is the essence of all the Vedas, and we'll take you back home, back to Godhead by itself. And we'll do our best to follow the order of our founder, Acharya, which is to follow four regulative principles strictly, to chant 16 rounds, and then to do our best to spread the Sankirtan movement, racking our brains in any way that we can to make sure that it gets out to as many people as possible. And so please feel free, take birth here at Iskand Silicon Valley. There's plenty of opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> For living entities to appear here, so we're inviting you. And anybody else already born wants to come here, or participate and help from afar, where there's no more geographical boundaries. We are uh, bhaktas without borders. Is our <laughs> program <laughs> bhaktas without borders? Okay, so uh, today we're going to hear from devotees the realizations of 2014. Um, some of the devotees are prepared, others they will be a little more spontaneous, but uh, as things going, we'll keep it, um, keep it short, and then if we need uh, repeats and you want to say more later, we can. Do you want to set up a chair here, or do you want to pass around the microphone, or what do you want to do? Pass the mic around? Okay. So hearing the realizations of other devotees is guyam akyachi prachiti. We hear what's in the heart of devotees, what realization Krishna has given them from their activities in Krishna consciousness. And it will be nice uh, today and any day, but we'd like to pick up, we'd like to capture as many of the, the strong points as possible, usable points. I see Shraddha has her laptop open, as usual, ready to take down information. So uh, m either one of the co sankirtan leaders want to say anything as a preamble? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Prabhuji, um, I was actually reflecting for past whole week um, about the marathon, the the Sankirtan for the whole year. And um, one theme kept repeating all the time is that um, devotees actually were working together this year um, with full dedication and devotion. Previously, we used to have MSF weekends, like there used to be a set weekend in a month that this month devotees would go out on book distribution. But this year, when I was putting down the MSF dates, I realized that we don't do that anymore because we go out every weekend now. So there is no specific MSF weekend that we go out on book distribution. So I'm actually grateful to all the devotees who are going out every weekend these days on book distribution. This is the positive side of mission creep. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the kind of mission creep we like. <laughs> Very nice. Beautiful. Thank you. There are so many more, um, but I would... If time permits, then I can um, then I can say more. But there is there is one verse that I thought that it was. Um, I, I was reading yesterday night from Srimad Bhagavatam, and then um, this was about Narada Muni. He um, he was explaining how he saw Krishna, and um, the moment he saw Krishna, then immediately Krishna disappeared, and then Krish then he 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 with mechanical ways he was trying to bring that image back in his mind but then a voice came krishna revealed from his as a voice and he said that um, you cannot just see me just by your endeavors you have to be freed from all material desires in that purport actually Srila Prabhupada was mentioning that um, that actually seeing krishna means actually doing service and that's a very very nice purport i felt like um, um, that's one six twenty three from Srimad Bhagavatam. Probably should we read? Uh, or Would you like to? Okay? Yeah, please. The translation says, O virtuous one, you may have only seen my person, and this is just to increase your desire for me. 
1622 sorry prabhu o virtuous one you may have you have only seen my person and this is just to increase your desire for me because the more you hanker for me the more you'll be freed from all material desires purport by shri prabhu pad a living being cannot be vacant of desires he is not a dead stone he must be working thinking feeling and willing but when he thinks feels and wills materially he becomes entangled and conversely when he thinks feels and wills for the service of the lord he becomes gradually freed from all entanglement the more a person is engaged in transcendental loving service of the lord the more he acquires a hankering for it that is a transcendental nature of godly service material service has satiation where a spiritual service of the lord has neither satiation nor end one can go on increasing his hankerings for the loving transcendental service of the lord and yet he will not find satiation or end by intense service of the lord one can experience the presence of the lord transcendentally therefore seeing the lord means being engaged in his service because his service and his person are identical the sincere devotee should go on with sincere service of the lord the lord will give proper direction as to how and where it has to be done there was no material desire in narada and yet just to increase his intense desire of the lord he was so advised so prabhu i was just thinking that the devotees here are are going on and on and on without stopping and and even though they're so they're doing so much of service practically going out every weekend they are still not satiated they are their last um, last two weekends of the december we didn't go for book distribution and everybody was hankering that when is our next sankirtan so i just was thinking that how the level of the devotees has increased so much for the past year beautiful thank you very much hari krishna we're taking realizations from your experiences in sankirtan hari krishna i was thinking like shil prabhupad tells in bhagavad gita like uh, bak- devotional service means bhakti means devotional service and devotional service means service to the devotees and the service to the uh, uh, krishna consciousness activities so <laughs> when when we go out on sankirtan prabhu we, we meet uh, different devotees and many people uh, one mata ji asked me recently that you are covering entire bay area like every year like free mount kupati no and uh, many areas you you are not exhausted <laughs> and uh, i was meditating on this particular point prabhu but by krishna's mercy we are never exhausted bro <laughs> wherever we go we meet um like uh, like if you choose one spot and it's by prabhupad mercy or krishna's sad devotees mercy we meet again uh, new people every time it's new people and uh, I means some people maybe never got uh, no hare krishna also like uh, uh, like i met one lady last night she is from fiji prabhu and she said um, you putting this tilak and uh, what is your practice you went to for church and many questions but i understood um, like if you won't go out and give this books to the people or people in general so how we can get taste within ourselves like meeting people giving krishna conscious that is the highest thing so by like a bay area is not exhausted so we are not not done any even not even a scratch uh, so i pray all devotees who came for enter marathon they never said no whenever we call them they came for sankirtan and uh, leaving everything out and because of all devotees only we are able to reach this goal and uh, i am thanking each and every devotee uh, for contributed for this marathon so thank you hari krishna hari krishna prabhu hari vamsha 1 
please forgive if I am little incoherent. I didn't prepare. I was, I was just thinking in the morning, which of the few points or few uh, bullets that I would like to take with me from 2014 MSFs. So I could think of these four things, books, goals, anxiety and cooperation. And <clears throat> if we rewind back, I mean that has been um, the, the four, the main pillars even all the way up till the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all our Acharyas. <clears throat> At the time uh, when Goswamis were living in Vrindavan, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told them to write books and he gave them concrete goals. Um, that you have to do this and he gave instructions, excavate these temples, take out bhakti as the main process of all the Vedic literatures. And it was not that their journey was easy. We see so many examples of anxiety like Rupa Goswami. Um, he couldn't find Govinda Dev temple and he was distraught. Uh, so there were anxiety in their lives also. But they mitigated all this by very sincere cooperation for the, for the mission of, uh, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we even fast forward it little more. Narutam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, Ramchandra Kaviraj, uh, Shamanand Prabhu, Rasikanand Prabhu, all, all of them were given goals as well. And Srinivas Acharya especially was deputed uh, to take charge of this mission of taking the books of the Goswamis by Jiva Goswami to uh, Gaudadesh. So books and goals. And goals was specifically distribute these books and Shamanand Prabhu and others were told to go in Utkala Diresh and preach specific goals. But then again their life, their path was not easy. There was so much anxiety, the whole set of books get lost. I mean, uh, it's unimaginable because these days if books get lost, maybe we can print it. There are ways to get around that. But that time they were writing on birch leaves and first they had to dry so many things. A lot of anxiety, but how did they mitigate this? Again by cooperation. And Bhakti Ratnakar, I was reading, it explains so nicely that when the books, they found the books and got the books to their destination, how all, all of them rejoice, just like we rejoice at every MSF offering once we hit the goals. And then we even fast forward it and we see at the times of Srila Prabhupada, traveling Sankirtan party and then um, so, even library party at that time, uh, they had specific goals and books were the basis and they were all cooperating and there was, there was also anxiety. I mean, sometimes they had to take permits and we had deprogrammers, so a lot of anxiety at that time also. So when I look back 2014 and the MSFs and these four pillars ring, the books, goals, anxiety and cooperation, I think that basically we are reliving 15th century. We are reliving what Goswamis were doing in Vrindavan, what Narottam Das Thakur and other associates were doing in Gaurdesh, what Srila Prabhupada and his Pasha, his associates were doing the whole world. We are doing that same in Iskand Silicon Valley. So it is, it is, it's a very, um, very pushing experience and only calls to that we push more. So I'm very thankful that I'm a little part of that and got the opportunity to be a part and um, looking forward to the coming two hours where we chalk out both goals and anxiety for 2015. Thank you, thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu. More. Yes, Shada. Hare Krishna. Um, when we started planning last year and when you were presenting at the Temple President's meeting in January, you had brought up the topic of um, always sell in bunches. And that was a thing that, that was the common theme throughout the year. And I was a little bit nervous and about whether how can we, how will we be able to, you know, sell them in bunches. 
uh, so tuned to like you know just reading one Bhagavad Gita or one Krishna book at a time. But then it is true, we were able to um, to distribute so many Bhagavatams, so many Chaitanya Charitamitas. And um, I mean, my I just work with Mukharvinda, um, distributing majorly at the corporations. And um, and I would like to take this opportunity to actually to thank Mukharvinda because he does a lot of the work that I cannot do because of my hands. So there's a lot of cooperation that happens in this little team. And uh, this year particularly, um, I mean, Mukharvinda was just taking on book distribution in the last few years, but this year I could see the excitement, you know, much start much, much earlier, and he was actually planning out things and strategizing, and, you know. Um, at one point in time, we were looking at, you know, how do we raise the money, let's go and go to many people, and then he said, no, let's distribute sets, and that strategy worked, you know, again, taking it back to distribute in, in bunches. Um, one thing which I also noticed in in the co- distributing books in the corporations is is that um, there's a lot that is involved uh, when we are, when we and we also do uh, went door to door and so I can do the contrast there is that when you go door to door there's a little bit of anonymity there and and you know um, you can get away with certain things but when you're in a corporation you are there for your life and people know your past present and and they can and they can govern your future. <laughs> So, um, so, so we have to be, you know, <laughs> we have to be very, 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 very careful, um, you know, when playing things um, in the corporation, you know, um, act very, very, um, act very professionally about that because we are representing our, uh, an organization, and so they should not, you know, because we are like the ambassadors of ISKCON sitting in uh, our organization, so. They will form an opinion this way or that. One thing good that I noticed this year was that they, uh, a lot of them did come to come to the temple to attend. So that was a good thing um, that we saw. Um, I also noticed that um, people, some some of them really are really big donors. But I've noticed that the big donors shy of donating every year. Like a two-year cycle is much better for them. So I was worried when a lot of the book donors kept on saying no or had started coming with some excuse, I've already donated to India and things like that. But then Krishna started sending, you know, new big donors. <laughs> so Krishna's always there. It's at one point in time, um, um, I, I, I was very sick during the entire marathon with, you know, um, frozen shoulder and, you know, all kinds of uh, virus and all those kind of things. and. In December, I had I was completely surrendered to Krishna. I was like, Krishna, I, I can't do it physically. I just cannot do it. <laughs> and and then again, the bundles came to rescue because of Hari Vansha Prabhu's uh, brainchild, the Goswami package that brought in, you know, a lot of um, people. And I was, again, I was thinking about the Goswami package, considering the contents inside it, that people have already read the Nectar of Devotion. We have already given them Nectar of Instruction, you know, how do I present it? And then, you know, the funny thing is that the, the, the dhuli uh, and, you know, the, was a big, big attraction. People just, you know, they just went for it. I mean, even if they don't read the book, they they want, they went, they were willing to pay 350 bucks for Rupa Goswami's dhuli there. So, <laughs> so I just came to the conclusion that, you know, just have faith in Krishna and anything else. <laughs> in bunches or not. Sugiwa means who's next? (laughs) (laughs) Japanese. Yes. Yes, I wait. Hare Krishna. Krishna. I think our goals in MSF are too easy. Every, <laughs> every time in MSF we smash it. We need to challenge ourselves to do more books by making our goal harder. If we do, if we do rounds, and we're we need to do rounds because before we go to book distribution, because if we tell people to do rounds, um, if we tell people to chant, there's no use if we don't chant ourselves. Hare Krishna, thank you. So the kids will have 
40 40 percent of the one goal. More. <laughs> Double G. Double G, one more. Yes. We normally we only go to apartments majority Indian sometimes. This knowledge should be passed on to Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, etc. They know very less and maybe none about Krishna. We should deliver Krishna to all. Kids team should go to majority Chinese maybe one day. We should go where there's all kinds of people. Here, here. Good work, Edwait. Very good. Very good. I see the succession plan coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I just like to also thank you, Vaisasika Prabhu, for giving your continuous uh, inspirations in the monthly Sankirtan festival and the book distribution process as well as the new methodology all the time. So I just wanted to bring some other dimensions of the book distribution where as per the scriptures how it really manifests just like Akama Sarva Kama Vya Moksha Kama Udharadi Tibrena Bhakti Yoga Na Yajati Purusham Param So whatever the desires you have either even up to liberation city is also fulfilled by the Lord if you worship. So I know when kids all go for book distribution six, seven, eight, sometimes uh, the kids come and after one hour they'll be tired or they want water. Then we may not have water bottle but when you knock the door immediately somebody will invite us, oh do you want to drink water? So it gives us, oh my goodness, Krishna is like arranging everything. Then I know sometimes uh, kids come or oh, they feel like hungry and Manjula Kanta Mataji is our, uh, she brings cake and other things. So, but that time if it's not available, then some doors open. Oh, do you like banana? Do you like take orange for the, they see the kids. So, I compare with the scriptures is never failing in the things. Only thing is we do not realize that how Krishna is so subtly arranging the divine arrangement because we are, the kids are really sincerely, you know, engaging in uh, the book distribution. It's very, very authentic. Otherwise, all the Mataji, like Kameshwari Mataji, Manjula Kanta, Sukheshwari, Ananda, and uh, many other, those who come for the book distribution, they bring something, the, you know, snacks, so that the kids are motivated well. So they have break time, which is 10 minutes, 2 hours, in, in every 2 hours. So that gives them more energy, they eat, they talk, and they make more strategy at the time, which direction they would go, which direction somebody else will go, and how to approach and it becomes more competitive but in a healthy mode, so that's very nice, <coughs> one aspect I see. And the <coughs> other part which I wanted to say, yesterday we are reading uh, Prabhupada's uh, pastimes, Lilamrut from his childhood to up to uh, at the age of his marriage. So I was going through the how each incident of Prabhupada is really relating to even book distribution, just like the first incident which Prabhupada's uh, pastimes is with, uh, you know, the chicken feeding, chicken soup, and how Prabhupada, uh, even at the age of very, I don't know, it's one year or sometimes very early age, six months or one year, how Prabhupada uh, rejected by pushing this one out, so it did not even touch this one. So similarly, we have very, very strong impediments in the earlier stage where many things are coming, but as long as we are really remembering or touching to Krishna, those things have been taken away because we have attachment, many people I know, they say they have attachment to so many magazines, so many like times, you can talk about uh, different varieties of illustrated weekly or n number of things, but as long as it is bringing Krishna, so it is going away. Then when Prabhupada also grows old from six months, then he was uh, giving an incident that in Calcutta, at the age of 13, there was a communal riots where Prabhupada was just playing outside and immediately somebody says that there is a riots going on. And he said that a man with his knife is chasing to Prabhupada and how he was running. And later on Prabhupada realized it was just he remembered his DD Radha Gobind. And that's why he is really saving Prabhupada even 
before you know at the age of 13. So we can also see many of the not only in ISB there are many devotees who have I have seen in Facebook put like in Ukraine and in some part of the Eastern Europe how they have been really giving so much of realization how Krishna is saving them during book distribution in the greatest danger means Krishna is not saying in a word rather than he is really doing it. So at, at, at least for ISB we are not in such kind of grave situation that somebody is uh, doing something uh, aggressively but we are always uh, protected by Lord Narsingha Dev always. And the third one which I wanted to um, say before the monthly Sankirtan festival, I can just bring um, some of the, like eight, ten years, nine years ago, maybe ten years ago, we used to do like the Bhakti Briksha group was a little bit prominent in ISB, which Gandharvika Mataji was kind of our main leader, and Anand Rupa Prabhu, he was, I don't know, many of you may not know, but those who are little senior devotees may know, Anand Rupa Prabhu, and uh, then some other devotees, myself, four, five, and Raghu Prabhu was there, Priyanka Mataji, Raghu Prabhu. So, that time we did not have how the organization really helps. And as Harivansa Prabhuji mentioned, how the books and the goals are helping. Because in the earlier days when I know, there was no structure means, because there was no MSF or Vaisajika Prabhu was doing his book distribution on his own. He was not giving his mercy fully to the congregations at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so later on, so it was like everybody was on its own stack means so we go and take books and beginning we just discuss ourselves we will start with you know small books which is yoga or uh, nectar of instruction or something because you did not have the courage at the time not necessarily courage maybe Krishna has not manifested his potency so we cannot even we take two or three Bhagavad Gita maximum for a sample we don't basically bring take it and distribute in the earlier days. But we start with the goal was we start with the small books because that was our thought and intention that we distribute small books. And the only places we go is like Bharat Bajar and um, New India Bajar and two, three places where Jananivas Prabhu was there also. We do some Harinam. And the goal was because it was, the goal was never mentioned how many goals you have to do, how many Gitas you have to do. And it started like that. But nevertheless, anything somebody is writing, that is also the beginning stage where all the things Krishna saw the sincerity of the devotees in the due course of time. And if you remember in the earlier days, we never used to distribute Srimad Bhagavatam in first couple of one or two years, maybe very less, but there was no such, uh, you know, power. And that is, even if you design that power, it doesn't come. It comes with certain level of somebody's purification as uh, Manini Mataji read that Narad Muni saw Krishna, but he said that you cannot see me. You need more purification and more, um, what do you call, advancement in spiritual knowledge. Then only you can be able to see me. You are qualified. So similarly, our, the test is when uh, Sula Prabhupada also says that 25, 50 Bhagavatam set uh, distributed by some devotee and he would mention, yes, it is a cumulative accumulations of your pity which has come to this stage and also definitely the mercy of spiritual master. So we are actually going, this, this signifies or symbolizes that our, uh, the movement, the book distribution movement and ISB is going in a progressive path, which means that we are going in the right directions where the devotees' cooperation is definitely manifesting in the books, because books itself loves, as long as devotees are satisfied, devotees are uh, pleasing to each other and cooperating to each other, the books comes in hand and goes to other places. So that gives the, all the things, whatever ISB we have been doing, this is a greatest significant, you know, item that all these uh, peripheral characteristics or attributes of the devotional path which is manifesting simultaneously. That's all. Hare Krishna. Sadhu, Sadhu. Pass it back. Hare Krishna, Nirnath Pranam. Uh, from this Sankirtan, you know, personally learned a lot and in fact, I, I think this is the best Sankirtan I have seen uh, at ISV and uh, very inspiring, best in terms of uh, the mood, 
best in terms of number of devotees uh, and then like uh, you know it's not dependent on f- a handful of people now you know i see it's becoming a big team and of course it was a best in terms of the number of book distributed also i've been inspired by few devotees over this period and like to just mention my learnings as i said this is one of the best because of a very nice infrastructure that we have here starting with haldar prabhu and devotees like haldar prabhu and mata ji who behind the scene are uh, you know i have seen them working from 9 to 5 9 to maybe 9 to 9 on saturday and sunday making the best use of time so that it's very easy to go out and distribute books uh one of the you know i think you know the best person growth i would say i'm sorry if i'm just I've seen Hari Om Shri Prabhu practically, you know, taking a lot of responsibility, you know, for achieving goals we need people who take responsibility, deliver and that has inspired me and, uh, you know, try to imbibe that in my own self. One of the things I've learned and I'm observing is the corporate team of uh, uh, Shraddha Mata Ji and Prabhu Ji. Uh, Uh, I'm, I'm, it's manifesting in front of my eyes, you know, the mercy flowing from Guru. If someone just follows and tries to please the Guru Maharaj, I, I can see, you know, how mercy is flowing. It's as if they have their hands in an electric socket and the electricity direct connected. And, uh, you know, that, that is very inspiring. I mean, I actually wait for their emails. <laughs> and uh, the way they are doing it uh, i only wish if i had some of the qualities of you know getting lakshmi the way shraddha mata ji and prabhu ji are doing mutti gita would not need lakshmi from outside so <laughs> <laughs> so that is something for me to learn from them another thing which has inspired me has been kameshwari mata ji she has been a force and i'm i'm just simply inspired by her sincerity if i'm not mistaken she has been going out practically every sunday or every weekend over at least the last few months i do not know but uh, thanks to whatsapp she keeps on inspiring <laughs> me and maybe all of us so she's a truly a big big uh, you know inspiration and uh, not only to me i think you know all the parents of the kids and that's what is inspiring that we need a big team if you want to do big and not just from a handful of people another thing i've learned from sukeshwari mata ji wow she is just amazing in shrimad bhagavatam distribution i personally asked her how do you do it and she of course gave a lot of credit to malini mata ji but i i tried uh, you know one of her tricks i i asked one of my relative they want shrimad bhagavatam i wasn't expecting a yes but he said okay i'll think or okay i'll take it and i haven't yet distributed that just happened day before yesterday they want the <laughs> gujarati shrimad bhagavatam <laughs> well i have yet to distribute it <laughs> i have yet to complete it but i mean i'm just not inspired and you know trying to at least contact people who are in my you know contact list to approach it and it's amazing that it's not that difficult as we think sometimes so that's something i learned from her yeah and of course uh, skp prabhu and malini mata ji leaders were leading from the front when when you have goals uh, you know you need to not just be sentimental but very organized and one of the best thing a leader is to inspire others to get the best out of it and uh, that is very nice honestly when i heard about uh, the goals at the beginning of 2014 about the sets i said ah now that's difficult <laughs> 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 but it turned out to be so easy and in fact uh, maybe because i can't distribute so many sets i get more inspiration you know when i hear about sets being distributed so it's amazing one other devotee you know who has been inspiring me a lot has been selva prabhu mm. 
I mean, it's practically a one-person army and it's even more difficult when you do not get the type of association that probably other book distributors are getting. Usually other book distributors are in a team, it's a very festive atmosphere, but Selva Prabhu has been an inspiration going practically single-handed and, uh, you know, keeping the smart box thing. He's amazing. In fact, probably the only devotee who has done Srimad Bhagavatam, who has done Motel Gita, who has done Smart Box and of course other books. In fact, he yesterday called me up and he said he, go, he, he was passing through a motel in Sunnyvale. He went inside and he got an order for 60 books yesterday evening. Hey, wow. Hey, wow. Uh, the another devotee, you know, Vaisheshika Prabhu just mentioned devotees without beyond borders, if I, yeah. Another devotee, Vedavit Prabhu, who has been, you know, serving not just ISV but everyone in Motel Gita, you know, beyond goals or beyond doing it for my temple, just for the love of distributing books, just for the, you know, because just for the sincerity of it. Finally, you know, as a Ananda Mataji, Shyamalangi Mataji, Manjula Kanta Mataji, again Kameshwari Mataji, uh, Sushil Prabhu, you know, they have been inspiring me uh, for doing so much with the kids. Unfortunately, I have not been able to take my kids to so many book distribution sites, but I see how the kids are progressing with these parents who have been inspiring me, you know, to take the kids out whether it's door-to-door or festivals or anything. And of course, uh, a big, big gratitude to all the donors who have, uh, you know, given up their hard-earned income, especially to projects like Motel Gita, which otherwise cannot run without donations. I mean, it's almost assumed or taken for granted, but uh, almost 50% or maybe even more of the Lakshmi is coming through all the donors, so my deep gratitude and, uh, you know, it's not easy in this today's time and world to do that. And of course, uh, it is good fortune to be here with Vaisheshika Prabhu, getting his inspiration. He's like the electricity, lighting all the different bulbs which glows and makes it beautiful. So, without his inspiration and guidance, nothing would have been possible. As, as Bali Mardan Prabhu said, uh, you know, I was in good fortune to be here since the last 10, 11 years. And uh, I've seen, I've learned book distribution from him. And I've seen how everyone at ISV and North America and maybe at all over the world are benefiting. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, dear devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. There have been a lot of realizations uh, in this year's book distribution, uh, but I want to share a couple of them. Uh, for me, uh, one of the things which, what stuck, strikes topmost in my mind is uh, uh, how much mercy, right? Uh, Mahaprabhu's mercy was flowing. So initially, in the beginning of the year, uh, we had the goal for uh, distributing CC sets. So, uh, I still remember asking Malini Mataji, what is the goal? Uh, she said, uh, uh, 25 sets. Uh, we need to distribute 25 sets of CC for this MSF. Now looking back, the number looks small, but uh, at that time, you know, I was, uh, <laughs> I was wondering, 25 sets door to door, how are you going to do it? <laughs> so I was asking, telling Mataji, how are you going to distribute CC sets? She said, I don't know, Prabhu, let's try. <laughs> so the very first weekend uh, that we were trying to, going door to door and uh, distributing CC, we ended up distributing six or seven uh, CC sets. So that's, uh, I literally saw Mahaprabhu's mercy, right, uh, flowing at that point. Uh, because we even distributed sets to South Indian people. And most of the South Indian people uh, don't know about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they are hearing about him for the very first time. 
and they ended up taking sets. So that was uh, really, you know, for me it was a big realization. Uh, it's not us who's doing that, right? It's, it's Mahaprabhu's mercy is flowing right there. So uh, I remember coming home the other day evening and that evening and Manjala Ganta was asking me, how many sets did you distribute? I said, we distributed around seven sets. She was literally shocked. <laughs> she asked me, none of you have read Chaitanya Shatamrita. At least she knows I haven't. <laughs> At least she, she knows that I haven't read it. How did you, how did you distribute? <laughs> I told her, uh, we spent 40 minutes talking about Srimad Bhagavadam. <laughs> and then uh, we said, this is the autobi autobiography of the person who lived that life. Please take it. <laughs> and that's how we distributed. Right? Yeah. Because even uh, I remember discussing Mataji, what points do we say for Chaitanya Shartamrita, right? We don't have... <laughs> but that, that literally, you know, uh, I could see uh, Lord's mercy flowing there, right there. So the other uh, biggest realization, uh, I thought of sharing with you one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, anyhow, I'll share with the group. Somewhere towards the middle end of the marathon, uh, I had a feeling, right, uh, we are kind of pushing too hard. I mean, we are distributing books, you know, the way we are approaching people and uh, we talked, at least for me, right, personally I felt, uh, because the goal was very high, uh, I felt, you know, we were, um, somehow or other we want to distribute the books and we are really pushing too hard, uh, which probably, you know, we wouldn't do had the goals had not been that high. So I had this question on this in my mind for some time actually. So I told this to my wife as well uh, about this point and uh, she didn't have an answer either. Uh, maybe after two weeks uh, and after I discussed with her, uh, so I was, this thought came to my mind one day while I was chanting as well. So on the night and uh, after chanting I went up the room and uh, you know, Manjula Kanta was reading a book uh, by Prabhupada's uh, called the Nectar of Book Distribution, the red color book, you know, which basically is a compilation of uh, questions, you know, a lot of devotees have asked Srila Prabhupada about book distribution and his answers to it. You know, she told me, hey, remember you asked me that question? I got the answer. So, one or the other, somebody asked Prabhupada a very similar question, right? Hadn't we pushing too hard on book distribution and you know, trying to sell books? And uh, you know, Prabhupada's answer was, uh, yes, we are pushing hard, but our goal is to distribute books by hook or crook. <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, that's fine, there's nothing wrong in pushing hard. And he even encouraged uh, spiritual competition between the temples as well. So that to me was... Uh, for me, the real, biggest realization is uh, when you have some genuine questions in your heart, uh, how Krishna answers you immediately, right? Some form or other. I felt I got the answer right there uh, when she told me that. Uh, so that was another realization. And And I also feel uh, this this year uh, our Sankirtan team has become uh, stronger than ever. Uh, Rupa Prabhu and uh, Kumar Lila Mataji are back. Uh, Ram Sundar Prabhu and Kamala Radhika Mataji joined us. <laughs> so, so, and uh, Hari Vamsha Prabhu has, uh, has also now got involved with Sankirtan this year and uh, <laughs> that made a big difference, yeah. So I think we were able to, because of a lot of devotees, we were able to, always you know, we were able to form multiple teams and uh, go in different locations and uh, each doing, each team doing small, small amount, you know, it made a big difference at the end of the day. So you have three teams and each team said they distribute three sets, at the end of the day you have around nine sets. So I think that made a big difference, you know, how much uh, small, you know, each one can do, the end, you know, the end result is really big. So, I hope uh, the team gets stronger uh, this year as well. So I, I, I really pray to the Lord. Thank you for those prayers. Hare Krishna. How many sets altogether? 
for this year, how many did we actually sell the, during 2014? Hare Krishna. How many sets of Bhagavatams? Oh. Three. Three twenty-eight actually sold during the 2014. So almost, almost a set, of, one set a day. So next, this year we can do two a day. <laughs> Just think, everyone should. When you sell a set, we should start take two sets because one for you know somebody else. Okay. Bunches like bananas. We were selling the Bhagavatams are a bunch, but we should sell bunches of Bhagavatams. So. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, the, I think if you reflect back from last year, the inspiration is the key. Um, we get inspiration from multiple sources, from the books, from Prabhupada. I think one of the biggest link uh, which we which I think is more important is the role modeling. Uh, because inspiration could come from multiple sources, but once you don't see the people who actually do it and a role model that activity, I think that inspires actually more the person to do more. So, I mean, on the role modeling side, I can't find anybody better than you know, when I noticed in L.A. Rathi Yatra, I mentioned in my offering uh, this year, but, you know, the, the mood which, you know, the, the, you were absorbed in uh, distributing when everybody was getting ready to come back. I mean, that tells us, you know, we, I, I mean, not as a group, but to me, but we are just not even a beginners in this game because uh, it, 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 it is very... It tells to me, I'm not talking about others, but uh, uh, I think uh, th that is the mood I hope one day, you know, we, we, we get because that, that, that is what I think makes you what you are. Uh, I think that is very, very the role modeling and that inspires all of us to come to that level. And I, and I see how uh, uh, on a role modeling side also on Krishna Prashottam Prabhu, when he went to his marriage, and he distributed books. <laughs> that, and that was kind of, you know, at the time, two, two years ago, three years ago, I felt like, oh, you know, maybe, you know, he just did it because uh, it is possible or whatever reasons. But once you see that it was done by somebody and in that special conditions, then why can't I do it? And that inspired, I mean, I'm <laughs> not on the marriage, but... <laughs> but uh, this time when I went to India, uh, you know, just it, it, it just happened that I went to visit the temple there and I took a, a full uh, Bhagavad Gita set to distribute to my relatives. I thought then he could do it to distance relative, why can't I do it? After distributing a little bit to a known people, it itself is a bigger challenge. But I think it's very satisfying uh, once you see people take it, the Prabhupada's books. I think that satisfaction, especially the one whom you know, I mean, that was very, very satisfying, very, very satisfying. So to me, it's more about how we could, the widespread uh, presence of our, uh, you know, or the congregations or, the, or ISKCON's facility, it really facilitated. If had been there no Chandigarh temple there, I would have not be able to carry the books to go there. And similarly highlighting on LA temple's presence, when we went to L.A. Rathi Yatra, I mean, we distributed so many books, but it wasn't possible had there was no L.A. location in the temple, we wouldn't use that facility to pack the books and do all that stuff. So the wide, widespread presence to me is, you know, I think uh, the, the facilities like ISPs here are connecting with to the right, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, uh, other groups, I think that will really help us add uh, in our, in our movement. Finally, I just wanted to highlight uh, Selva Prabhu's, uh, you know, single army force. I think it's, it's, it is, it's beyond the even role modeling part, you know. Role modeling people do because they have been doing for a living and they know it, right? They have practiced that part. But to me, the, how, how much intensity does he have it? I just wanted to highlight one point. 
Chat Bhavan actually has a uh, you know smart box, and they do the renovation. They removed that renovation. Uh, you know, they said we can't keep it. We took everything out, so there's no space. He has been because I know the Chat Bhavan owner, and he has been. I think maybe I remember five or six times asking me, Prabhu, can you request him? I mean, as if this is this is what he want. And I try to call him that person once, twice. It didn't happen. Prabhu, did you call him? <laughs> And then I feel like, oh, I tried to call that person, I went to visit, I see there's no space. He again kept on, Prabhu, did you call? Why don't you ask him? I mean, five, six times, and this is where Krishna was waiting to test maybe my lethargy, you know, he wanted to push me, and I then went once with my brother there, and then somehow, owner was there, and I told him, and he said, no problem, we will put <laughs> And, and there is no space, there is no space. They have a deities there. He said, I'm going to put in this corner uh, something. But that was what was possible. I know the Salva Prabhu is the constant, the intensity in his mind is, I mean, I don't think even matching is different. It's all about if you get even a part of it. It's, it's so inspiring. So, you know, I think the addition of, you know, I, such more devotees in our congregations uh, with such inspiration. It, it's 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 something which you know keeps us going uh, in, in in the next year. And I think Hari Bhamsha Prabhu's uh, new drive this year. It, it's 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 something really special. It's noticeable to everybody. But I just wanted to you know appreciate that because he has been here. But this year he's he just like you know like a hockey stick we use in the business terms, right? You know, you're, uh, the, the volume starts shooting up like a hockey stick, you're there, but you just took it off. I, I, I just wanted to <laughs> like, you know, appreciate his uh, the contribution to that one. Thank you. Hare Krishna. I myself uh, didn't go for a lot of uh, the book distributions and the marathons, but uh, whenever I did, I felt that it was not me who was going. Like the devotees somehow they carried me. They're so enthusiastic. The enthusiasm, that's the biggest highlight for me. And even if I'm at home, if I couldn't go or I'm going late, the WhatsApp, you know, it keeps your mind there. Even if I am not physically there, I'm like counting, oh, this team did this much, this, that, that team did that much. So. The enthusiasm is really, um, that is a thing which, you know, for like some backseated like, devotees like me, it's like uh, um, the biggest highlight. And uh, one more thing which I noticed whenever I went, that there are a lot of good people outside. I mean, um, I feel even I would not have been that receptive like a few years back, the way I see some families. Uh, the first time they hear, they like, they are convinced or as if they already have that knowledge inside but it's just not mm. manifested so um, that's i really like it and you know i wish they get closer to krishna consciousness because they did receive the books but uh, i hope you know bhagavatam does like miracles to their lives now that's it. excellent answer prayers ready Hare Krishna. So I'm not the part of the book distribution, but I'm like a person who stands on the, you know, the, all the way far on the, uh, on the seesaw and <laughs> wait for the wave to come and drag you in. So <laughs> I get a little bit of, you know, water here and there of the mercy of yours. And I go and uh, I wanted to mention that I more play the role of observant and I just just get sometimes overwhelmed thinking about it that how beautifully you go out. There are difficulties that you put up to just go out every weekend. There is a, things to do at home, things to do at work. There is always constantly the waves that's, you know, you can have 100,000 reasons to stay back, but you just focus. You just, you're just cruising. You're just like... Um, 
Kesho Bharti Maharaj says, keep trucking. And I see that when I see you guys, that yes, you are keep trucking and that's what I need to follow. Um, I also felt that um, when I went out with Krishna Purushottam Prabhu to see this uh, motel owner, that we know him from long distance, from almost 10, 12 years. And uh, he knows also one of the devotees in the congregation who is close to that motel owner and tried to convince him to take the Gita. Apparently, he did not end up taking it for one or other reason. And then I went through another channel, which is Carl Mehta, and I asked him if he can put me in touch with him. And due to the Carl's word, the person agreed to meet with us, and he took some Gita. And he pulls into his $60,000 car, Tesla, and you know, just gets there because we had this appointment. He kept, gets there, and we walking with the Bhagavad Gita. He opens the door for a Bhagavad Gita to come in. And he himself had, didn't have his assistant on that day, so he tries to figure it out how to give us a check. So he gives us a printed check. He puts his hand on the Gita half of the time, and he's trying to figure things out. So I see that I was thinking, I'm just observing things and I was thinking, do you know what, maybe does he get mercy by even just putting his hand because I don't know when he will read it. But his hand, and then I, I'm just watching, watching and, and when we were leaving, we were telling him about, about the smart boxes and you know, the other, how, other programs that we have. And the guy, he says, let me know if I can help you with anything else. I have different projects that I can help. And I was thinking, this guy we've been trying from 12 years to you know, even just come around the temple. But I was thinking not to just, um, you know, he had in his heart that he want to help out. But it sometimes matters if the pure devotee comes around. And I was happy to bring Krishna Purushottam because of his purity. And, and I felt that where he says, Lao Matra Sadhu Sangha, how it can be impacted right immediately. So I was just thinking, the, you know, Bhagavad Gita, the Srila Prabhupada's labor of love and a presence of a devotee can do such a miraculous thing that the guy, he has a $60,000 car, multi-million businesses, but he, he wants to do a, something good that makes a difference in his own personal life. So until you do the ultimate, you know, well wishing for others, you cannot help others. So I was thinking he wanted to help out and I was thinking how Srila Prabhupada's book distribution is allowing people to get engaged, those who are not even qualified or those who even doesn't know that, you know, they have a possibility to be delivered. And many other incidents that I see here that how each and every individual contributes. And I, I remember the story that about, I don't know exactly how it goes, but only I remember the part that when devotees thinking that, you know, Krishna is going to pass elephant through the eye of a needle. So when I, mean, I see all of you and I see the, the, you know, the path of devotional service, is is um, is is how how much you are all advanced, and I cannot just figure it out how it connects. But with the mercy of Krishna, I can see that, you know, that Krishna is actually right here, you know, passing all these things to the eye of a needle. So Hare Krishna. I'd like to acknowledge all the devotees who are on, have joined us on the internet from many different places. There's also five devotees on the phone. And uh, we'll take this opportunity to hear uh, one of the comments from someone who's texted in from the internet. And we encourage all of you to either call in or text in. The lines are always open here. We, this is a universal community for hearing and chanting, so please feel far, part of the group. Shraddha will read a, a text that just came in. Thank you, Maharaj. Before I read that, I just wanted to uh, comment on Hansa Priya Mataji's. Um, we were talking about bhaktas beyond the borders, and she actually <laughs> crosses the species borders. <laughs> <laughs> you better unpack that. 
<laughs> so, so most of us talk about human beings beyond country borders and that kind of stuff, uh, or temple borders. And but Hansi Premanji actually engages her dog Snicker in book distribution. And he so. did a lot this year. Too. He did. <laughs> I think he he was way beyond the ten percent increase. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. So this message is from uh, Bhaktin Kathleen. Kathleen, and she says she offers her humble obeisance to you, Maharaj. And she says that my greatest realization last year was it was time to seek shelter from a bona fide spiritual master. And then of course she goes and takes shelter from one who is a A's book distributor. <laughs> and she says that uh, Krishna has arranged for me to distribute books at work so that those recovering from drug and alcohol addiction can come to know Krishna. Hare Hare Hare. Yeah, you have to find your higher power and when you do, you have to really know what that means. And when you do know what your higher power is and how to take shelter, then you can actually really take shelter. And otherwise, if you're not convinced, if you don't know the characteristics of the higher power, what it means that there's a higher power and so forth, then you may lose traction. Haladar Rupa. Yeah, Hare Krishna Rupa. From my realization, um, it's not only just 2014, but over the period of years, like uh, two to three years, I see like how the, you know, Sankirtan is, uh, you know, like uh, becoming a driving force behind everything I do in my Krishna consciousness. Like uh, do the chanting. Every time my chanting is, you know, not perfect, then, you know, I see the devotees in association when I go to Sankirtan, how they are doing their chanting. They have finished their chanting early in the morning. And they, they are reading Prabhupada's books. They are doing the, you know, like, they are taking care of the deities at their homes. So everything I am learning when I am going for the you know, Sankirtan. And it's becoming, you know, like everything Sankirtan for me. You know, like everything I am learning from there. And uh, as, you know, Malini Mataji mentioned that, um, you know, every weekend um, from the IS we are going. And that is becoming, you know, kind of, Routine is very nice to in my life, you know, like as uh, you mentioned one time in saying that Jayadwada Swami mentioned that he do each and every things, you know, every day. And uh, this is like every Saturday just book for Sankirtan. And like in my office, like as Friday comes, people ask, what is your weekend plan? What is your weekend plan? <laughs> every single Friday they ask, they have nothing to ask. So, you know, I said there is, <laughs> I said there is no plan, but I have my other plans. <laughs> So, you know, it's become a routine and it's uh, making my life simple and, uh, you know, giving me time to think about what I'm doing. And uh, what world, you know, like, uh, the like cooperation, it says, you know, like uh, in marathon last year went really well, like uh, we can see the success of, uh, you know, big festivals like Go Green Festival, Pumpkin Festival as well as the, like Bhagavatam says, like Warm Spring community was really good. Like uh, we knocked the door each and every, and out of that, how many number of doors open, there is a 40% chance we give them Bhagavatam set. So it was a really huge, you know, like a big success. So I think we thanks to Sukheswari Mataji to find out that community for us. And... Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, Sankirtan is also giving the lifetime memory, like how you, you know, have the good time with devotees, how you share some points which is really, you know, uh, touch to their hearts. And, uh, you know, like I, I prepared the slides, right? And then by seeing the pictures of 2014 Sankirtan, it's giving the, you know, joy inside, you know, how those days was when we are convincing this family and, in, you know, in the starting he was not convinced and he ended up taking the Bhagavatam set. So, and uh, regarding the, you know, like Sankirtan is kind of also, you know, spiritual competition and especially due to this WhatsApp group, like sometimes we go, you know, in different groups and some groups already did, you know, starting selling up the Bhagavatam sets and that giving us encouragement or kind of anxiety saying that. <laughs> <laughs> saying that, hey, we have to do that. There, there is no prasadam time or there is no break, just first, you know, like, let's uh, finish our goal. So that's how we are achieving the goals. And uh, also, this year, Union Square was also a very good spot. 
um, I found there is so many nice realization like people over there. Some people like they are one person I came across is very old and I think he's from Asia somewhere China or, and uh, he just walked by to me and he said like what are you giving out? I said books. Then I said this is the books Bhagavad Gita I explained to him and I thought he will not give any Lakshmi. And I asked him, you know, do you want to give any donation? He didn't reply anything. And then uh, after that, he, he and his wife both were just staying that. And he was, you know, slowly, slowly, he was showing his ID. And then he, you know, take out his wallet and then give it out one dollar. And she say, he said, like, I'm poor, but I know the value of this knowledge. So I'll give you the donation and he gave one dollar. So that, you know, touching the hearts and it's kind of lifetime lesson. This lesson doesn't you know, teach any of the universities or any of the corporate world. And this is, you know, giving the good value in myself as, you know, going to Sankirtan. And uh, also, you know, like, uh, it's like, uh, Saint, and like in San Francisco, you know, especially in January 4th, we went, it was so cold. It was too cold there. And uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I had like three or four layers of, you know, like jackets, but still it was too cold and <laughs> shoes got, you know, really cold. Then hard to stay after 5 p.m. And I see even, you know, like the happiness or kind of anxiety over there was really far better than I went, uh, you know, a couple of weeks before in Hawaii and went 10,000 up for seeing the sunrise. So there is nothing comparison I can do that. <laughs> So, so it's, it gives Prabhu, you know, like nice lessons and uh, cooperation and everyone is doing, so I'm doing. That is also, you know, getting the mode into it. Um, and pulling uh, and giving, you know, like asking other people, it will be easy if everyone is going there. So it's only a couple of devotees are going, then it will be hard others to join. That is also, I learned that, Prabhu. That's all. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare The prophet recognized that there was a, a spirit of competition amongst the devotees and one particular letter that he wrote to the, some, well, he wrote a similar letter with a similar phrase. Uh, some devotees who were expressing desire to become more involved in Sankirtan and saying that they were going to do really well in book distribution. And at that time, the San Francisco temple was number one. And Prabhupada would end the letter and saying, yes, it's very nice if you, you know, become... Uh, the best in Sangatown, then I'll have to come and stay there. But then he'd say, but I do not think that anyone can catch up with San Francisco. <laughs> he <was> like, <laughs> and he said that several times to other people. It's like, ah, you know. <laughs> Probably the, the point uh, Harada Rupa mentioned uh, about the spiritual competition, right? So, I could witness it within, within our group itself. So, I think one, one weekend, one group went to San Ramon, one group went to Cupertino, and one group went to some other place. So, thanks to the WhatsApp, right? We have this live broadcast. <laughs> Whenever we distribute a set, we immediately post a picture and said, So, I still remember Skippy Prabhu telling me, Prabhu, San Ramon team has distributed one. Let's come on, let's go. <laughs> I could feel him uh, feeling that anxiety. Then let's come on, we have to catch them. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we were saying the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at the end of the day, right, uh, when we eventually caught up, uh, SKP Prabhu came and told me, Prabhu, come on, we did it. <laughs> but it, it was a nice feeling at the end of the day, but even though you feel that anxiety in, in the middle, but... Uh, yeah, WhatsApp the, was a big breakthrough this year, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I noticed it, that uh, wherever I was, <laughs> All day long, ding, ding, <laughs> ding, and I thought people were going, why is your phone ding so much? I said, every time it goes, there's a, a book was sold, you know. So it's a nice feeling. It's very good. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, it's so enlightening to just hear the experience. Maybe I'll just share some small thing what I learned. As you tell that uh, when we learn Sastra, we are in the... We are in the front seat, like we go to see movie, like we are in the front seat, seeing the same thing similarly when 
um, being in this like uh, sankirtan with uh, one of the most enthusiastic devotee i feel that i am in the front seat and seeing in my myself everything what's happening <laughs> so i think i should say <laughs> the um, as many of that um, first i will say uh, especially about sradha mata ji like how um, she she did this but it was not just um, just externally but it was internally it comes from the heart that she really want to uh, meet people distribute them and connect them with prabhu pad and it's all um, it starts with uh, what you taught so nicely over the year how properly organize um, how six times give and one time take and always been the giving mode not just taking mode and that that makes a difference it's not um, most time we just want to take take but there there is a giving part as well and that i uh, that we are if we focus on more giving part krishna automatically makes so that he he takes 10 time more than what we give <laughs> so it's um, and um, also um, is is also um, the heart uh, the what is there in the heart uh, sometimes we uh, hear that okay there are lot of external difficulties this that and i know personally like last 3 months is suffering from frozen shoulder and um, so many other diseases but every weekend want to go want to go want to go whatever happen is actually <laughs> driving the driving the um, that force to okay and not only just weekend is week days that is another thing that uh, to contemplate every day when uh, wake up okay whom to meet and um, those who do in the corporate it, they can understand it's not easy thing is the most difficultest thing because you yourself has work and being in a more uh, uh, responsible position it's not easy to just go out and after going out also is 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 really a uh, different different experience <laughs> uh, you meet uh, like one time um, she was sharing that she asked some of the very senior person okay you like to take book and it will know then she will i don't have any answer what to say next <laughs> in such a um, high person saying so um, it's it's a really um, inspiring uh, to be in that and seeing the front row all this thing happening every day <laughs> i'm waiting for my text okay <laughs> this many books done this uh, text and so and uh, uh, and also i like to share um, in the same line um, the realizations that i had um, we met maybe i think last time as a one person um, in the temple and he just casually met sadha mata ji and uh, mata ji gifted her a book he may book and then um, he happened to be my colleague in my office and she connected okay um, then uh, that person to me uh, it was two years before and then i followed up with him and the first time he told and he um, i asked him okay how you like the book and other thing he was like furious like anything how can be supreme you can tell krishna is supreme personality of god it like how can why should we believe him so many things and it happens um but okay this goes on goes on and then last year then this year um, i used to follow up with him something give calendar or like give prasadam invite temple he used to do okay then uh, this year um, it it so happened that somehow krishna inspired him to again like but i can see that that changes happen during the time the first time when he was there he was so much infuriated just to okay how can why i should believe krishna is saying and why i should believe that kind of mentality and then he started some missive hearing what is there and asking questions about bhagavad gita and then uh, recently um, in in his home someone visited his friend and they saw that bhagavad gita with mata ji given him and he told okay we want to take this bhagavad gita so he told okay take it so that as you told that sometime even person we give book it may not be meant for him it may mean for someone and i see that clearly it went to someone else but then he came next day and okay i want my bhagavad gita so he given me <laughs> no money and he told okay this 20 dollar take and give me a bhagavad gita for myself i can see that that attachment develop for bhagavad gita and then after some day um, actually he was going on some outing and then he met uh, someone he take from so he used to always then start carrying bhagavad gita with him so he was going in some outing and he carried bhagavad gita in his trunk and someone hit him from the trunk and it was like it was very serious accident and he told that the whole bhagavad gita also and he got in that accident uh, gone i told you yeah, see krishna has saved you just by being in bhagavad gita there and then um, he again asked me okay give me one more bhagavad gita because i lost and he was like as soon as accident happened he told me yeah, i want to an ex bhagavad gita i because i lost my bhagavad gita so 
I see that over of the period how he developed from the attitude of just like even not wanted to hear to having uh, so much um, respect and uh, love towards Bhagavad Gita. So it was the main. So. I just wanted to add one thing. Uh, I, I, sorry, I just want to take one minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, when I used to work in uh, in India back, uh, there is a, for a Japanese multinational company. I used, I always, when I used to present my product to the customer, I had a very strong conviction that my quality is the best. Uh, I mean, it's true because Japanese quality, as we are comparing with other multinationals at the time, with best of my knowledge, uh, I had a very strong conviction. Uh, I was just trying to correlate when I was hearing the conversation in last minute. That strong conviction in ourselves and the purity of Prabhupada's message is there. So there's nothing, I mean, actually for us to do it. Because once you have that strong conviction, things you can sell it. Because on your face you can't fake for longer time. You know, you could be, you know, advertised for a few days like this, but when you have to talk for a long and long time, the conviction in ourselves is the selling force, which actually sells in my mind, I was just thinking. And I think Prabhupada has already gave us everything, you know, and our conviction will sell the books. So I just thought to uh, share that it's, it's, it's the... As we go out, uh, the belief in the literature that this is the best. And once, when I went to India, when I was speaking to my relatives, trying to talk, that the same feeling when I used to sell my product in India, I had in my mind that there's no competition here. I mean, just taking a corporate, comparing it in the corporate world, but this is not a one-to-one -one comparison, but still with that conviction, it becomes so easy. People could see your body language. They could feel you with such conviction you speak. The rest Krishna does his magic, of course. You know. Yeah, I was, I was talking about earlier about how purity is the force. And that's a symptom of purity, that the mind is cleared of other competing ideas about what might be a good idea to do in life. In other words, if someone has this conviction that if you just chant Hare Krishna and read Srimad Bhagavatam then everything good will come and if you do anything other than that then nothing would, good will come. This is a kind of, this is a purity of understanding that and Prabhupada had that purity when he came to America and he mentioned also and he, he talks about this in the Chaitanya Charitamrita in a purport that other um, members of the Gaudiya Mat had been sent to the West but he says because in their heart they actually didn't have that conviction. They, they really were not um, prepared within the heart to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. They had some other um, doubts about it. I don't want to go into the details about what the doubts were because it would be speculation. But he said they, they didn't have that firm conviction. They had some other idea. And therefore they weren't successful. They had to come back. And they, they claimed some success when they came back, and of course just going is successful. But they were called back by their spiritual master who saw that they were becoming more affected than the, than the population and so forth. So uh, really the ingredient that Prabhupada talks about over and over again is the conviction within one's heart that there is nothing better than this. That's unstoppable in presenting a, a conclusion or a particular uh, product especially when it's, it's well-reasoned, it's not fanatical, it's realized knowledge. When it becomes solidified in one's life through maturity, through experience, and one sees that this is the only panacea, that uh, it's easy to be tolerant and present to people over and over again, even when they say no, and not be affected by it, by them saying, oh no, I have something else, because we, we're not interested in something else. Thank you, it was a very uh, practical point. Yes, Prikishori. Hare Krishna. So this um, 2014 was definitely a great increase, 10% increase in book distribution, especially we could see it firing in ISV. And um, 
I was um, meditating on how this consciousness of, and this conviction, as you were saying, Prabhu, was, the, um, was very prevalent in the hearts of the Vaishnavas. And their real main occupation was not software engineer, teacher, student, whatever. And their real main occupation was to go out and give these books to everybody and basically push their hands into the books of people using their um, um, skills, their occupation, whatever they had to distribute these books. And um, I could practically see that when every five minutes my phone would say, oh, you know, my co-worker gets a Bhagavad Gita and Sukeshwari Mataji especially, my friend, you know, Bhagavatam, and so many um, interesting things, that I especially remember the kids giving Bhagavad Gita to their teachers. And um, when we were in San Francisco and we were uh, coming out and backing up, we were in the parking lot, and um, um, there was a car coming from the back, and it was a Benz car, and um, I, my mother was also backing up, and she hit us, and um, I, I was immediately shocked, you know, how much are we going to have to pay for this, it's a Benz car, and then the lady comes out, and she's so nice, she says, you know, I'm sorry, this is my problem, I'll fix it, we'll pay for it, everything, and um, I was really taken aback by what a person she was, and then um, Sukeshri Mataji comes out with a Bhagavad Gita and hands it to her. And um, we figured out that she's, her name is Shafali Razdan. And she is one of, um, like something like Tulsi Gabbard. And she was going to take an oath on Bhagavad Gita. And she was going to use the book we gave her to do so. So it was so nice that... Um, <laughs> so the accident was Krishna's arrangement. <laughs> Where am I going to get a Gita? <laughs> So she, she, we were going back and forth about insurance and everything, and then she sent us an email and said, thank you so much for the Bhagavad Gita. So I was seeing that how devotees like Sukeshri Mataji, all of the devotees here, they use every opportunity to um, present Bhagavad Gita to them, to the masses. And, <clears throat> and um, Srimad Bhagavatam is was especially big, this, um, this MSF, and uh, definitely Indian apartments and, um, and uh, friends and acquaintances were great. Uh, faci facility for distributing Srimad Bhagavatams. But one of the well strategized leaps of this MSF was stepping into other different grounds. Like San Francisco, Haight Ashbury, Union Square, um, Market and Powell. And I could just, it was just a new uh, step to talk to Westerners. And we saw people coming from this, like really old people coming from the 70s saying, you're the Hare Krishnas, right? And um, say, I got a book this and then, and I went to so-and-so temple, and it's so nice that you guys are back on the streets, you know, <laughs> reading um, Bhagavad Gita's. And not only those, but I felt like I was connected to the past. And it's not only those people, we found people um, uh, who are saying, I've been looking for this for such a long time, and people in tears. And one lady, she was um, on the run, you know, she, all her stuff was in a little cart, and I guess she would sleep on the street every day. And I gave her Bhagavad Gita, um, and she said, uh, she gave me a big hug, and with tears in her eyes, she said, thank you so much, I've been looking for this for 40 years. Mm. So that was such a... Um, it shows that, um, you know, now it's become quite stylish and quite um, the modern fashion to go out and do community service. Um, you know, so-and-so corporation goes out to some neighborhood and plants a tree and calls it the day and says that, you know, we did a lot of community service. But um, what's happening now is that devotees are, um, who, are, who have this conviction are going out to every place in the barrier, which is um, ignorantly conceived of as having everything, um, they go and plant these Kalpavriksha trees of um, the books, which um, actually give what is the only thing that's needed, which is um, uh, true contentment and um, knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and knowledge of your relationship with Him. And um, the, these, these Kalpavriksha trees are like little grabbers. Um, they, they reclaim the souls, um, as Srila Prabhupada says. And um, also the, the goals, when I, when I would come and see the banner that was newly printed, I would think, oh my gosh, how are we ever, gonna, <laughs> ever going to reach that goal? But um, when you see when there's pressure, when there's, um, when there's uh, a lot of stress, um, you know, the coal 
is pressed and pressed and you get this wonderful diamond. And also when sometimes when there's a really nice flower and you squeeze it out, the true colors and the true smell comes out. So these goals were exactly like that. They, they really pressed out the true qualities of wonderful, wonderfulness in every single devotee and we could see it pop out and make this beautiful garland that we offered to Srila Prabhupada last weekend, um, which is very nice. And uh, <clears throat> I, I always um, love to read this quote, which is um, from Srila Prabhupada, which I think was written to Rameshwar Prabhu. And it says, Whatever progress we have made, it is simply due to distributing these books. So go on and do not divert your mind for a moment from this. Uh, and uh, this was uh, maybe not said, but practically uh, walked by every single devotee. Going from, uh, I, you can see in the pictures, Krishna Priya, you know, all the way to our Sankirtan leaders, and uh, I, I'm really grateful to be a, in a small part and at least witness what is going, what miracles are taking place on 1965 <laughs> Latham Street. When you mentioned the poster, I was thinking it's, it's also metaphorical of how our poster for Sankirtan has grown over the years. And how when we started, we, we had a small poster, and now it's become large. And I remember the discussion we had about having a large poster and how much it costs to have a poster and so forth. And then realizing in, in our conversation that one of the reasons we make it large and prominent and we put a lot of money into the poster is because then we do feel that this is a big thing. We better make the poster worthwhile. <laughs> it can't be a small event. It's, it's actually a big thing. And it is indicative, though, when I'm looking at this. Remember the small ones that used to come in, and, and we have them on the wall, and this has grown over the years also, step by step, through stra strategy, planning, part of the strategy, and, and uh, Krishna's mercy, the devotee's sincerity. Sukeshri. And then one day we'll have the whole wall. <laughs> Hare. <laughs> Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, this year has actually been a very, um, very, very <laughs> detailed, lot of realizations. And um, I, I just thought in my mind that I always heard book distribution is so important. And just, just like that, I just felt that I wanted to follow in the footsteps of SKP Prabhu and Malini Mataji and asked Malini that what should I do? I just wanted to go try it out. So she gave me a couple tips and truly till today I'm trying my best. So whatever I have done is because of uh, the tips that I got uh, from uh, Malini and of course from Vaisheshika Prabhu. I was thinking that um, you know Prabhu always says that carry books you know and um, you know you need to just present because it just goes because it's it's Sri Ramad Bhagavatam and Pra and Bhagavad Gita. So I basically don't do anything. It's it's already there. I just uh, wanted to share one small thing. Yesterday I was just listening to this um, con uh, conversation that Sri Prabhupada had, a room conversation, and uh, Kitida Mataji from Florida was sharing with me. She said that uh, all the devotees were asking Prabhupada that you know we want some tips on book distribution. We want to be able to do well. Everybody was sitting and very apt, raptly listening that they were wondering what would Prabhupada say. The first thing that he said is, um, th the only thing that he said is you have to sit and chant your 16 rounds in one sitting. And um, I, it, it, was, it, was, it was a shock to me because um, for the past couple months I, was, I actually read the Shravanadi Jal that Prabhu had sent in. And I was thinking that every time I have to go for book distribution today, I have to make sure that I get up early and finish my 16 rounds in one sitting and only take the books out. And that's what I've been trying to do. <laughs> and I just thought that uh, Prabhuji had sent it in Sharanadi Jal. And uh, then later, after a couple months, I hear from Mataji that this is the same answer that uh, Prabh Prabhupada told the devotees, where everybody was expecting that Prabhupada is going to say, you know, maybe do this for book distribution, maybe do that. But it was chanting. Another part that I always thought about is <clears throat> book distribution is important, but I have to also do other services. And I was, um, that, that's what I was thinking all these years. But I, had, I read so many quotes, but one quote that really stuck me, and I know about the time, so I'm just going to keep myself just to a couple um, things that Prabhupada says. He says that book distribution is the best way to collect money. 
So it says, we can send you unlimited number of books. This is a letter written to Gopal Krishna Maharaj, Los Angeles, 21st June, 1975. He says, we can send you unlimited number of books. You simply have to apply your brain how to sell them. Then you will have plenty of money. This is my mission. You know, started when I came alone to your country to sell, by selling my books. And, and still, whatever money we are getting, it is coming from the book selling. So it's already proven how important the book selling is. So I always thought that how do we get Lakshmi Mary to do this project, maybe to do that project. Maybe we have to do this little bit more, maybe we can get Lakshmi. But then he made it so clear and he also says one more um, which he wrote to Tamar Krishna Maharaj in 1969. He says, if you can arrange for selling of these books, there will be no scarcity of money, either for the father or for the son. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. It, it's just been beautiful and uh, thank you all. You know, for I me, mean, I for me, I felt realized that uh, book distribution is so much important compared to everything else that I've been uh, doing. <laughs> Thank you, Hare Krishna. Sundar. Ramanand. Yes. Whenever. Uh, Whenever someone wants to go out and book distribution, chant uh, 16 rounds in one sitting, that is not whenever one wants to go on book distribution, that is every day. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing is that this is one of the reasons we talk about why book distribution is such a powerful service. You may not realize that you need to every day, but when you, go, when you combine book distribution, which is powerful and hearing and chanting was valid, you get a super powerful combination. Just like rice is a good food, beans are a good food, but when you mix them together, the, uh, there's a synergy that makes a super food. And there's this impetus when you're going out, you know that you have to be more ready than ever before to deal with people's subtle bodies in different ways. You, you, you bring up your chanting, but Ramananda Saka Prabhu makes a nice point. Yes, every day. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, Prabhu. Yeah, that's that's so true. And you know, trying our best with with the situation that I'm in. <laughs> and I just wanted to add. Um, I Shivatsa had shared two things that he wanted. He he very unlikely. He's very shy. He doesn't want to talk. <laughs> but he asked me. He was just thinking that every time we go on book distribution with kids on. Um, uh, to Indian communities and he's been asking me we should go to Saratoga, we should go to non-Indian communities. We're looking at everybody as a soul, so we need to start looking at, <laughs> you know, yeah, for the goal. This so, year we're going to have a, a, quota system, a quota system, affirmative action to make sure that, <laughs> which will include, you want? I think, some festivals where uh, everyone will learn a language. We should have a language, special featured language of the month and all the kids can learn a, a new language and all the adults, everybody can learn a new language each month. So we'll, so we'll pick out 12 languages. What's that? WhatsApp band for that language. All the with that language. What, uh, have a WhatsApp. WhatsApp. You, can only, you can only communicate in WhatsApp today. <laughs> Not so extensive, but actually there's ways in which to, a little bit of communication in each language knowing the culture and so forth makes, uh, makes it so that you can enter into that culture. It's very, very little is needed, but some consciousness and awareness. And I like that the kids are pushing for this. It's very good. Sundar, you had a point? Um, I was trying to say that we should go to non-Indian com communities because I know we're great book distributors and all, but it's just that I think... <laughs> I think most of our books go away because we're distributing them to Indians. So if we go to non-Indian communities, Indians still will become Krishna conscious because they, they'll just hear, oh, there's a Krishna temple here, let's go there. And then they'll come and they can become Krishna conscious. Well, in non-Indian communities, if you tell them that there's a Krishna temple, they have no idea who Krishna is in the first place. So if we go there and explain to them about the Bhagavad Gita, it's kind of like a chain effect. We tell one person about it, they'll go like, hey, you know, someone gave me a Bhagavad Gita today. And then it's going to spread like wildfire. Wow. 
So, so Sukeshri, can I borrow him as a national spokesperson? <laughs> He may not even know that, but this is actually one of the hottest topics in, in America and in the world. And I distributed that, that lecture by Devamrita Swami. And we have our own uh, Sri Kumar Prabhu who's promoting this Western preaching and so forth. But it, 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 I think this is something that will come up in our next session, just after Prashadam, which will be at 10 o'clock, uh, in the brainstorming, talking about uh, what I like to call bhakti habitat developing a habitat, a home where people f from various cultures will feel satisfied and they're taken care of, and then reaching out to them. And that's a very important point. So we may have you speak more about that during the year. So be ready, okay? Keep, keep preparing. <laughs> At least some. We should, we should break through to that. Uh, section for Bhagavatam sales because it'll, it'll have an effect everywhere when we, when we learn how to reach out and uh, actually pl place a full sets of Bhagavatams in the homes of various kinds of people. Okay, Sundarananda Prabhu. So we're counting down. Prashadam is at 10 o'clock. We had Guru Puja earlier this morning. Today is a day about uh, reflecting, talking, and then brainstorming, which will come up at 10.30. So uh, please go ahead, Sundar. Uh, one realization I had um, is that, um, you know, while distributing in 2014, is that, uh, I, uh, I mean, we have, uh, we have heard this verse, Tana pi suni chena, tarora pi sahishuna, mani na mana dena kirtani sadahari. At least I have heard it so many times. But um, I felt that book distribution is one uh, service where this can be easily applied. And uh, uh, when you are actually going out to book distribution automatically, you have to be, uh, you have to basically in a, in a position of a, a beggar and that puts you in a humble state of mind and people can say anything they want and you have to be tolerant and you have to give them respect no matter what, whether they, either they, uh, you know, they um, don't regard your plea or don't take any book. So, um, <clears throat> and also the reason why I think uh, all the Acharyas and Srila Prabhupada and you yourself uh, emphasize this service so much is because I guess without um, applying this principle, there is, uh, I think this principle is so essential for progress in our uh, devotional service and uh, and I also felt that uh, uh, um, you know we, we give books to others and we reach out to so many people and they get benefited and we of course expand our movement also by bringing in uh, contact by coming in touch with so many people and so that is the, the, the movement also expands and that is also benefit but I think the biggest benefit is we ourselves doing that activity actually and uh, getting the mercy of the uh, Supreme Lord through the Parampara and and um, um, of course uh, uh, from you actually and uh, <clears throat> other than that you know some uh, light points like uh, I was happy that a lot of um, book distribution was done in Fremont and and uh, <laughs> and it was uh, um, convenient for me to to uh, because of the multiple locations we were doing it was convenient to go and uh, in spite of the you know busy schedule and so many things happening in life and but the 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 sankirtan and SFO was very special the yearly Thanksgiving sankirtan and. Uh, that we did Harinam Sankirtan, we did in SFO was very, very special actually. And um, and I think that's, and I think the, my biggest motivation is that it pleases, um, you know, all the Acharya Srila Prabhupada, uh, it pleases you and it pleases the devotee. So that's my biggest motivating factor. Vantika. 
Hare Krishna. So, um, whenever we book, go book distribution, we always see that all the devotees are always in a team and they're always really enthusiastic. And whenever they distribute Srimad Bhagavatam, they they go in like transcendental ecstasy and then they get their phones out and then they start WhatsApping it. <laughs> and then they're really satisfied. And I think that... Um, like uh, lots of other devotees were saying, we should go to also non-Indian communities and we should give like different language books and things like that. And um, lastly, I wanted to say, this is a Prabhupada quote. He said, um, <clears throat> book distribution is our real business. If we give them something else, such as a record player, only their senses will be gratified. However, if we give them books, they will be eternally benefited. So I really like that quote. <laughs> I'm seeing a, a pattern here amongst the kids. And on one side, in a kind of a lighthearted way, it, it's, it's, you know, charming. And on another side, it's a very serious realization that they're having about expanding to other audiences. You know, from the mouth of babes, this is coming, this kind of realization. You have a point before I go on. Oh yeah, um, Hare Krishna. So I think this year was my favorite year of book distribution, all in all. Um, I liked like how like I I like the book distribution was really fun going because like there was very nice association. Like all the kids were very friendly, and it was very easy to book distribute with all of them. Like they wouldn't hog the show when you book distributed, and that that really helped a lot. I also liked that the kids were going to festivals because I think that helped a lot and it was it was it was more fun when we went to festivals so like we went like out, out to different places. Uh, I I I think my the seminar you gave on Bhagavad Gita really helped us. But I also think the books the kids should learn to distribute different types of books because right now most of them are really centered on Bhagavad Gita. Like I know I I think Bhagavad Gita's like I'm mostly doing Bhagavad Gita's right now, but I think we should learn to distribute other books like I don't know Nectar of Devotion or um, that small book. Yeah, yeah, yeah Krishna book no, but like the other one, The Journey Home. Or, no, not Journey Home. Wait, sorry, something. Yeah, self -dis discovery. Yeah, um, I also think that the kids should get a higher percentage of like our goals. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Like 20% or 15% or something because I think our goals right now are really easy and we should challenge ourselves more. So if you give us like 15% of the, the monthly thing, it would help. 15. 15. 15. <laughs> I mean, 5 is okay too. So as I was saying, this sort of reinforced it. I really like hearing from the kids because they're not really kids anymore. They're actually, young, you know, turning into young adults. They're heading in that direction. And um, I can see that they're developing their own impetus and realization. And I, I'm also foreseeing that how they are going to take over the leadership because they have their own determination. And because, you know, they're growing up in this environment, many of them are growing up at ISV, from pillar to post. And I think, and I'm just, I've seen in other communities where kids are, are given a stake. They're given part of the goal. They're given a, a leadership roles and things like that, that they actually take it up. And when they start getting into their teens and then their 20s and things like that, they become proficient to actually take over the organization and lead it in, in certain aspects. And that's one of the best things that could possibly happen. So I like these ideas that are coming out, realizations that their kids are having and their own determination to do more and so forth. And one thing is that we have to have, uh, we just have to have a little chanting before the prasadam because every program has to be uh, preceded by and finished by chanting. You had one last point and then we'll chant. Yes. Hare Krishna. So, one uh, word description, uh, if I have to say about my realization of 2014 Association of um, the Sanketan Book Distribution Movement is, uh, I felt like it's Ram Rajya 
So people who are associated with that term know that uh, that feeling of contentment or a fulfilling experience of being in a natural habitat. So given the performance and solid strategy under your able guidance, I think the best is yet to be witnessed. Yeah, you look very happy. Every time I see you and you're always there and you've, you've joined in. And uh, this is one of the, one, one of the uh, wonderful experiences of having these uh, Sankirtan parties is you see new devotees come in to the environment and then they naturally become enlivened and be, take up their own impetus. And I've seen that in you. You've come in and you've, you've had this desire to be part of it and are feeling the happiness of doing the yagya. So we all pray to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he may uh, protect and empower you so that you can continue your service and do wonderful things for the Sankirtan movement. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Na Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschata Deshatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Radhara Shiva Sari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Nitai Gaur Premanande Sharidad Vijaja Jodendriya Tahika Jive Pele Vishayasha Gore Dharma de Jivayati Loba Moesu Dharmati Take Jeta Katita Sansare Krishna Bora Doyamor Kori Bare Jihajar Shaprasad Anadi Loba Shayanam Rita Pau Radha Krishna Gunaga Prame Dako Shri Chaitanya Nita Prame Dako Shri Chaitanya Vita Ma Vrshare Govinde Nam Brahmani Vaishnave Sopa Punya Vatam Rajan Vishraso Navijai Vrshare Sarvatukhanam Hanirasya Upajayate Prasana Cheta Soyashu Bhuri Parya Vatishtate Bhagavad Shri Maha Vrshare Ki Go Premanande Nitai Gaura Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nitai Gaura Hari Bol. Like to thank the cooks for the today. I don't see Avantika. Nalisha. Mataji, Hansa Priyata Mataji, anyone else who did the shopping, all those who donated for the boga, to the fire god for giving us the heat. Thank you very much to everyone involved. Nitai go Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Nitai go Hari Bo. Please come take Rashadam, Hare Krishna. And we have one last uh, message here. Just come in from our online audience. This is coming all the way from Canada. Shyam Mohani and Radha Mohan Prabhu. Wow. This, they say they feel privileged to hear and see all the glorious Sankirtan devotees. All glories to the team, ISV. We feel privileged to have Shamohini and Radha Mohan on the line listening. They're the uh, masterminds behind the Toronto Sankirtan, which has had a, a um, precipitous rise over the last uh, few years under their management and the management of the other devotees at the temple there who are all working together very cooperatively and, and every year increasing book distribution. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> They, they had a, a miracle ending to their marathon. They were quite a few sets away from reaching their goals. Lakshmi was far away. I had visited there and I was wondering, how will this happen? And then they let me know just at the end of the month that the miracles had happened and they had uh, rallied at the end and they, they surpassed their goals. So. Congratulations to everybody in the Team Toronto. Hare Krishna. So, uh, take prasadam. Everyone sit on that side of the room. Put away all the, the mats. And then we'll come back. Actually, you can leave most of them out and everyone can sit on that side of the room. And then we'll come back here uh, around 10.35 and we're going to start a brainstorming session to pick up all the best practices and ideas for improving in the new year. Thank you, Hare Krishna.
Go to Bhaktivinoda Ki. Shila Prabhupada Ki.